Thank you all very much indeed. Great to see so many of you here this evening to Speedway City for the running of the Australian Sprint Car Masters. Scott McIntosh in position. Big opportunity here for Brett Squires. Let's see if he can get on the hammer and get the jump on David Anderson. The Albury Express knows this track has had a lot of success and will be wanting to get the job done as we prepare for combat. We've got a start. Anderson away well. Tony Bartlett also on the hammer early and Mark Reuter goes straight into second position. Wayne Barker now attempts to come back on Tony Bartlett. They work the 3-4 bend and it's David Anderson for the first time in command as he rockets past the control tower. Running fairly high on the circuit. Mark Reuter is tucked in behind him in that beautiful J&J &J race car. Brett Squires in the JSR chassis machine has moved into third. Jazz Calandro battling, now making up some time in fourth. In fifth place, it's the number 75 of Tony Bartlett. Behind him, Greg Machos in 79. He cops a bit of understeer, Gary Rush. Forces his way through, now into position number six. Behind Machos, of course, is Wayne Bunker in car number two. We'll look for the track to really come in over the next race or two. Jazz Calandro continues to work over the number 17 of Brett Squires. Already the times have dropped by a half a second over the last couple of laps. 14.61 for the Albury Express for Wagga Mobile Cranes. The danger man, David Anderson, going beautifully. Mark Reuter in hot pursuit and the beautifully presented ROH Wheels White Line Transport entry. But the pressure is on for position number three. Brett Squires in 17, the 33 of Chas Calandro. The CC Racing, Castrol, and of course Gabriel Shocks. He tucks right into the left rear of Squires. Tony Bartlett beginning to catch them as well. Then we look back to Gary Rush in two. And the number two of Wayne Bunker with the 79 of Greg Machos from Victoria. About to go a lap down as David Anderson moves up behind him. Remember there are no rear view mirrors on these things. You've got to pay attention to the flags. It's your only indication that someone is coming up behind you. Have a look at this freight train now for positions three, four, five and six. Gary Rush has joined the equation. Let's check it flag time for David Anderson. He wins with Mark Reuter second. Chaz Galandro goes for the move on the inside. Can he get there? No, he can't. Brett Squires for third. Chaz Galandro fourth. Tony Bartlett fifth from Gary Rush sixth. Seventh place, a fast finishing Wayne Bunker. Be very interesting to see how the current Northern Territory, as my co-commentator mentioned, running very quick. First driver to sneak under 14 seconds at Claremont. Ran some successive 1390s and 1395s. Best against the best in the world. And here he is on pole position for Shell Helix. Of course, we're not forgetting the number four, Adrad Radiators, Freightmaster sponsored car of Trevor Green. No start this time through. And hits the lead, both Brooke and... We're just having a quick look here now. I think what needs to happen is Ron Cricky needs to move up to the outside of Dennis Burford. Dennis Burford uh, due to come out of... Okay, we'll see what happens. Peter Smith will be hoping to get the better of Brooke Tatnell on the start. Pace may begin to quicken around about here as they get ready to cast these machines right up and go racing. Peter Smith out drags Brooke Tatnell into turn one. Ron Cricky up pretty high. Trevor Green very quickly into third. Behind them the number 75 machine of Mick Hanlon in fourth. The chase is on. Peter Smith, he too was over in the States, brought back some equipment. And now it's his opportunity to take first blood here in the round of heat races. Of course, second heat is what you're looking at. He'll be wanting to prove 
to Brooke Tatton or Trevor Green and company. He's got as much mumbo and as much ability as them in the opening stanza. He lifts the front end coming out of four. Good start, 13.15 seconds from Smithy. Brooke Tatton now settling down in the Schnee chassis machine. The maximum for Peter Smith ahead of him. And it's the J&J chassis of Trevor Green. The same chassis that Trevor Green wheeled to victory in the South Australian Championship. The World Series Sprint Car Round here in Adelaide and the Grand Annual Sprint Car Classic. Down the main straight they come, 13.21 seconds for Peter Smith. But Brooke Tatnall now bearing down on him like a praying mantis as they work the 3-4 turn. He gets good drive out of it, but Peter Smith, to his credit, is driving a very calculated race, holding his line, saying to Brooke Tatnall, well, go for it, pal, if you're good enough, go around me. He's just staying up a little bit above the gutter. They're coming up now behind Ray Scott. Brooke goes to the outside. Here's his chance. Let's see if they can do it. The brave effort around the outside. He's still there. Brooke Tatnall trying to go for the lead. He cuts it down low. A magnificent battle, this one. Peter Smith now to the inside of Ray Scott. He goes past him. Brooke dives to the inside. Trevor Green's in there. Ray Scott's hit the wall, and he's tipped it over. The yellow has come out. It's a flash of red. Very unfortunate indeed there. Field slowing down, solid red. Ray just seemed to get up a little too high, just bumped the concrete, and uh, over she went. Toby's okay, our uh, fire and rescue team very quickly on the scene. And our roving reporter, the gas man, Lee Hanishek, uh, hopefully will bring us an update very, very shortly. Interesting to see what happens to the couple of laps up on the Speedway City scoreboard. What a dogfight it was. Peter Smith, Brooke Tatnall and Trevor Green. Using the pressure a bit in the left and the right hand rear. Um, all crews are working on it. Also Brooke Tatnall's machine getting us in right behind him. And in South Australia's Trevor Green from Ron Crickey. The 75 of Mick Hanlon and the number 9 of Dennis Burford. The orange cone is out on the back stretch. Effectively, when the drivers pass that cone, they are under race conditions. You are not allowed to pass anybody before that orange cone. As soon as the drivers have made their way past there, there is a rope attached and that orange cone will be yanked out of the way pretty quickly. Let's see when Peter Smith gets on the hammer. It's around about now. They stay with him. Out of turn four, they come. Cricky's got through on Trevor Green, who has run a little wide in turn three. Brooke Tatnall continues to work away on the rear bumper of Peter Smith into the 3-4 turn. But the South Australian certainly not lacking any mumbo as he powers into one. Very smooth indeed. If he can hang on for two more turns, it will be a magic start. One that perhaps has surprised Brooke Tatnall. Come on, folks, put your hands together for Peter Smith. The Highway Inn collar type label sponsor driver has done a top job. Brooke Tatnall finishes in second. Ron Crickey got through to third over Trevor Green from the number 75 of Mick Hanlon and the number nine of Dennis Burford. And fast Phil March from position number seven. Opportunity for Gerard Bolt on the front row of the grid. They're getting ready for a possible start this time out of turn number four. Here they go, getting on the gas well and truly. It's the 46 of Brad Haywood that moves into the lead. Joel not three wide in third spot in the number 44 machine. He looks to go around the outside of Gerard Bolt. He's looking for drive. Runs a little wide as Phil March gobbles him up. Phil March out there in the Maxim chassis. Had a bit of work done to it from last year. They've got some fresh equipment coming, but it's not here yet. But out in front, recording 13.3, is the 46 of Brad Hollywood Haywood. Then it's Gerard Bolt, but look at Phil March hunting him down. He lunges in three and takes him. 
Joel Knott goes with him. Aggressive driving from Knott, the Sydney Sider. So Gerard Bolt now back to position number four. Daryl Downing in fifth. Mark Gilbert in sixth position. But out in front of his Brad Haywood. Looking a million dollars at the moment as he wheels his way in through the 3-4 turn. Phil March has come from Brewer Field. And on the reverse grid situation, obviously, will come off the front row in the next event. So Phil March is very well placed indeed. However, oh, Joel Knott's hit the wall coming out of four as Phil March attacks his teammate. Watch Phil March down the back. Marchi, his customary dive in three. Haywood comes back at him, but March has got the power and he hangs on out in front. He's got some problems. I'd say he's got a flat right rear. Yes, he has. Joel not a flat right rear after banging the wall a moment ago. But what about the drive from Phil March? This has been an absolute tire terror. As he gasses his way through pit turn, he's got the thing just pushing a little bit. I'd say it's almost handling to perfection for Marchi. 13.11. Mark Gilbert now makes a dive on Gerard Bolt. The pair of them are slight coming together. And there's the checkered flag. What a dominant drive from Phil March. Blinding stuff. Haywood slowed up very quickly there. Daryl Downing, I think, ended up finishing third and was quite surprised at the rate at which Haywood slowed up. So I would call it provisionally as SA3, Phil March, the victor. Give him a cheer, folks, as he comes past. Sensational drive. Watch for the number five of Craig Power. He's just asking Power now to move up alongside the number six of Snowy White. Great to see Snowy back at the wheel, actually. Former sprint car pilot. That raced against my dad many moons ago, and my brother for that matter. As they come out of turn number four and get ready to go racing, that's what happens. It's Dylan versus Bishop in through turns one and two. Gee, we said that a couple of times over the years. Now down the back stretch. One driver getting a little sideways is the nine of John Mills. Adam Baines on the gas early. He's moved up to fourth, but out in front. It is the Victoria Zero of Noddy Bishop, looking very good. The SA2 of Luke Dillon has settled in now to second spot. And then we look back to the 10 of Hayden Bishop. He's running in position number three. Then it's the number 52 of Adam Baines. In position number four, followed by the number nine of John Mills. Mills now beginning to make up some ground. One casualty early on is the number seven of Billa Hang. He's parked at centre field as the action continues. 15.10 for the zero of Noddy Bishop. This vastly experienced Victorian. He's giving it everything at the moment as he gasses it past the start finishing line. A 15.05 from Noddy last time past the stripe. The number two of Luke Dillon. Smooth as always, this super quick kid. For Sprint Auto Parts, gasses it into turn number one. And we've got the number 10 of Hayden Bishop continuing to round out the top three from Adam Baines. The number nine of John Mills, Snowy White in six. And uh, the five of Craig Power back there as well. Currently uh, battling with what looks to be Stephen Muck. No, I'm sorry, it's the 25 of Grant Coombe. And the six of Snowy White, but the white flag now is on display as Noddy Bishop begins to fly down the backstretch for the last time under race conditions. The checkered flag's about to unfurl, and it will be the number zero of Noddy Bishop that takes out heat number one for the speed cars this evening. Number two, Luke Dillon in provisionally for second. Third place to the 10 of Hayden Bishop. He was followed in by the three, I think it may have been the three of Stephen Monk. Adam Baines in there somewhere as well. Number nine of John Mills, the five of Craig Power, the six of Snowy White. As we're ready to go green, it's exactly what happens as these two Commodores go at it. 
54 of Kevin Bickle in some trouble in the early going has been swamped by a number of competitors but down the back they go and it's Maris Velotz that gains ascendancy into turn number three Brian Chadwick tucks in behind him as they gas it down the main chute, Chadwick now looking for a run around the outside of him. The 49 of Neil Wesley, he's there in third. Chadwick challenges now to the inside. Let's see if he can get the job done. I don't think so. Just got a little taily coming out of the second turn. And over does it out of four. Very nearly chucked it away altogether. But Chadwick now has been relegated back to fifth position. Number 36 of Brian Finlay has rocketed past in the Sigma and he now has moved into third position. So it's the 49 of Neil Wesley. He's the driver that really has moved up over the last lap or two. He's there in second spot. Behind him is the number 36 of Brian Finlay. Then it's the number 99 of Peter Ware from Brian Chadwick in 41. Then we look back to the number 90 of Peter Taylor. Then it's Justin Jenkinson from the number eight of Andy Clayton. And also the number 87. I'd have to confirm, certainly uh, in similar colours to Alan Rutledge, the 87, but uh, we'll check on that as the night goes on. But back at the ranch, our race leader is negotiating turns three and four. Second place, Neil Wesley has gone very close to the wall. Brian Finlay will take this opportunity. Bet your bottom dollar on that. It's just what he does as the Sigma fires through into second position. You know, Wesley, of course, now back to position number three. Brian Chadwick fighting back from fourth. Behind him, it would look to be the number 99 of Peter Ware in uh, fifth position from Peter Taylor in sixth. Justin Jenkinson continuing to run in seventh place. Oh, the 87 for Valley View Constructions. The 90, I should say. Peter Taylor all crossed up there. Jenkinson now with a chance to round him up through turns one and two. But the white flag has come out for the City Dismantlers sponsored machine, Maris Velox. Number 48 is out in front, but the 36 of Brian Finlay, I feel, has definitely been the quickest driver on the track. It's made up a lot of ground, but it's all too late because the checkered flags have waved. Maris Velotz, the winner. Brian Finlay for position number two. And third place, provisionally, I would give to Neil Wesley over Brian Chadwick. They were followed in by the number 99 of Peter Ware, the 90 of Peter Taylor, Justin Jenkinson in the 87 machine, followed by the 61 of uh, Neville Glasbrook. And a couple of backmarkers just coming around now. Mr. Sprint Car, Gary Russ, joins us now in the pit area on the eve of the Australian Sprint Car Masters. Gary, welcome back to Adelaide. Thank you. Yeah, it's very nice to be back. Although, uh, we tried to be here a couple of weeks ago, but the weather wouldn't allow us to. Today, things looking better. The sun is out. All in all, I think it should be a great night of racing. Looks very nice, yeah. Real good. Where would you see your main competition coming from tonight, Gary? Right at the moment, I haven't looked around the pits, but uh, I haven't really taken in who's really here. Um, but uh, I guess if Brooks here, he's always a problem. Um, uh, I think Young Brazy is coming. Is he? Um, he could be a problem. Mate, there's always ten cars in the pits that are going to be tough to beat. Now you've raced for many, many years. There is talk that perhaps this could be your last season of racing. Uh, what is left for Gary Rush to achieve in season 97-98? Well, the season's just started, so we've got a long way to go. But, uh, you know, we're looking to have a good year. It could be my last year. It hasn't been announced yet, but it's, it's a good chance it will be my last year. And, uh, you know, if we have a good year, uh, I think it'll be time to put my feet up. What is it that drives a man of your calibre with so many championships and titles and, and feature event wins under your belt? Well, it's, uh, I guess, when you've been motor racing as long as I have, it's... Um, it's a disease. You enjoy doing it, and I guess, and if you do it well, uh, you continue to do it. While there's fun there, you continue to do it. I guess you've hit the nail right on the head, and when it comes to the Aussie Sprint Car Masters, uh, you've won the most of anyone. I guess it would mean a great deal for you to win another one here tonight. 
When you start off a season, you know, you, you look at all the major races and this is the first major of the year. You know, at the end of the season, you look back and see how many major races you won. That tells you whether you had a good season or not. And this is number one. So if you, if you can start the season off with the first major of the season, it's a good result. You've got a heck of a lot of fans here in Adelaide. They're going to love watching you tonight and so are we. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Behind them, Gerard Bolt and David Anderson as they roar into three. The start is going to be a boomer. Phil March will want to get the better of Gary Rush. Here they go. Yes, we're green. It's Rush that wins out. He desperately needs the points here. He finished well back in his opening heat. But he is on the gas big time as they work the 3 4 turn. Through they come for the first time. Gary Rush, Phil March, Daryl Downing. Then it's Mark Reuter from the 79 machine of Greg Matjos, David Anderson, Daryl Bottoms, and Gerard Bolt at the tail of the pack. 13.28 seconds for Gary Rush the six-time winner of the Australian Sprint Car Masters, perhaps the winningest sprint car driver of all time, 12.92 for Rush, 12.92, Phil Marsh with no answer to the speed of the Castro Warrior, 12.99 for Rush. Mind you, Phil will be a little better placed if he can hang on to his second spot because he did win his first. Just look at the way Phil March attacks the corners. I reckon Philip knows only one way and that is flat to the boards. A very aggressive customer. Daryl Downing doing quite a good job in third position at the moment. Mark Reuter following him in fourth. In fifth place it's David Anderson. Sixth place we've got Greg Machos in 79 versus the number 25 of Gerard Bolt. Then it's Daryl Bottoms in 35 who rounds out the field. But Gary Rush certainly on fire now. 12.84 seconds on the last circulation. He comes through. Puts a lap on the 35 of Daryl Bottoms very easily. Phil March chasing him around the 10 lap record. Could be in some trouble here. Rush coming up behind Gerard Bolt and Greg Machos. He looks to the inside of Bolt. He's shown him his front end. Could be a chance for Phil March to make up some ground here. Of course, Machos and Bolt both engaged in their own battle. But there's the checkered flag. Gary Rush the winner. Phil March second. Third place to Daryl Downing. So a couple of third placings. Pretty good there for Daryl. Has been fairly consistent. In behind them, Mark Reuter in 95 and the 37 of David Anderson. South Australian champ Trevor Green joins me in the pits. Trev, how are you feeling on the eve of the Masters? Oh, we're pretty keen, Johnny. Um, it's unbelievable that our promoter here has given us such good money to race for. I think it's the first time any of us local here in South Australia have ever run for money like this. And it certainly gets you fired up for a good performance tonight. And what about in the off-season? You were over in the States, you raced on many occasions. That must put you in good stead for the coming season. Sure, we um, went over there with high expectations and came back with the tail between our legs. We really didn't perform anywhere to our expectations when we were away. And it's left a bit of a bitter taste in our mouth, so hopefully we can get rid of that tonight. Now, it's funny when you look at the Masters, no South Australian has ever won it before. A couple have been in the top three. How do you plan on rectifying that tonight? You know, there's good competition here, there's a lot of punters have rolled in, even without Tommy, just for the good money, so it's going to be tough. It's probably going to be tougher than the state title race we won last year, and I'd say it'd probably be equivalent to World Series race tonight. So, uh, so it's going to determine a little bit with your luck and all that, with your pills and all that sort of thing. But there's no reason why ourselves, or Mark Reuter, or Phil March, Chaz Calandro, or any, any of the cats here from Adelaide, that, you know, all of us have got a chance of winning. We're all strong here on this home track of ours, and you know, we're looking for a good night. Having said that, Trevor, where do you reckon your strongest opposition is going to come from? You're going to have the uh, Rushes and Tatnalls and uh, Brad Haywards. Ron Crickey's been awesome. He's been really quick over in Perth, cutting under 14 second laps on the half mile. So you know he's got plenty of uh, determination instilled in him, and he's going to be tough to beat. Um, there's a rumour that Brazy is going to be fronting in and we hope he does because the better competition we've got, the harder we're going to try and it's all better for the sport. Trevor, I know it's a real family effort and we wish you well tonight. Thanks, Johnny. 
is on position number one, car 75, Tony Bartlett is on two, car four, Trevor Green is on three, car two, Wayne Bunker is on four, car eight, Peter Smith is out of five, 33, Chaz Calandro out of six, and the 17 of Brett Squires out of position number seven, the starter getting ready to send them on their way, that's what happens, Ron Pricky very quickly jumps into the lead, Tony Bartlett battles for second, but Trevor Green's taken him, a magnificent pass there, Peter Smith, has moved into fourth, possibly third. Yes, he motors his way past a hapless Tony Bartlett. Chaz Calandro is there in position number five. Behind him, it's the battle between Wayne Bunker and Brett Squires, but out in front, it is the man of the moment, Ron Cricky. A very fit, very healthy looking Ron Cricky. The Brunbury Bullet is blitzing them at the moment. Trevor Green trying to stay in touch in the number four J&J. 12.53. 12.53 seconds for Ron Cricky. His sheer speed is amazing. In the past has sometimes been criticised for his driving prowess on the big heavy clay tracks. But just look at him go now. 12.72 on the last lap. Trevor Green giving it everything. In behind him is Peter Smith. There's a 12.76 from Ron Cricky. Two-time former Australian sprint car champion gearing up for a third championship. Yes, the titles are at Bunbury this season. 12.64 from Ron Cricky. I must admit, Trevor Green not dropping back too much now. Peter Smith keeping Trev within his sights. Then it's Chas Calandro from Tony Bartlett, Wayne Bunker and Brett Squires. 12.67, watch out, 10 lap track record. It was a 209.4. I've got a feeling that Ron Cricky is about to break it. He lifts the front end a little bit coming out of turn number two, but the track is in immaculate condition. Cricky slices his way past Brett Squires. He's coming up behind Tony Bartlett. He goes to the inside decisively gets past Trevor Green and Peter Smith now begins to make up some ground. It's checkered flag time. Can he get the record? He's got a 208.84. Unofficially new 10 lap track record as the checkers wave. Let me double check. I'm certain it was a 209.4. Ron Cricky does a magnificent job from Trevor Green, Peter Smith, the 33 of Chaz Calandro. Let's just double check, 209.4 was the old mark, 2 minutes 8. SA95 for ROH and White Line Transport is Mark Reuter, one of our big hopes this evening. Mark, how are you feeling as we get ready for the Masters? Oh, I'm feeling pretty good today, John. I mean, been preparing for this one all through the pre-season and had a few practices, had a few problems and that, but looking good for tonight, I think. How much work actually goes into the pre-season, because we talk about it when it comes to footy and so forth, but in Speedway perhaps not quite as much. Um, well, it really doesn't stop. I mean, all through the speedway season, you're working on the car, and then when it's off speedway season, you continue just working on the car, getting it ready for the next season. Now, what are the competition here tonight? There's some pretty heavy hitters here. How would you rate your chances? Well, we always come out with a motto. We just like to qualify for the event, and then we take it from there. And, I mean, there's some good cars here tonight. It'd be just, just good to qualify. What is the main aim when it comes to an event of this calibre? There's going to be a few heats, of course, a dash, and the final itself. What's going to be the game plan? Um, we try and take it fairly steady through the heats basically and we try and get into the top six if they have a qualifying dash and we sort of take it from there and see how it goes. You've got a lot of supporters here in Adelaide Mark and we wish you well tonight for the Masters. Thanks a lot John Ty. Thank you. Mark Gilbert, Dennis Burford, Joel Knott, Mick Hanlon, Brad Hayward. Good to see that he's fronted once again in Brook Tatnall and the 55 of Ray Scott. Pace car out of the way, Dennis Burford trying to maintain a slight advantage on Mark Gilbert as they come through the 3-4 turn, setting himself up for a big run out of four. They've been given the green light. Mark Gilbert away very quickly in car number five. Joel Knott and Dennis Burford almost are coming together. Tatnall screams around the outside of Joel Knott and into third place. Mick Henman close to the wall. Tatnall and Burford are coming together. Joel Knott and Brad Hayward both past Tatnell. Brooke now tries to fight back at the Matorrid start to this. 
but it's Hayward who now looks underneath his younger teammate in Joel Knott who desperately needs some points. Finished near rear of the field in his opening heat race. But at the moment it is Mark Gilbert doing a sensational job as he powers down the main stretch. Time's not quite as quick as what we saw a moment ago. Brock Tattnall now works to the inside of Brad Hayward. Neck and neck into three. Tattnall wrestles his way through. A great pass that one from the Shell Helix pilot. Joel Knott in 44 now begins to put some pressure on the number five of Mark Gilbert. His car appears to be handling a little better as they scream down the main chute. Five down, five remaining. Mark Gilbert by four cut. Car lengths on Joel Knott who in turn has two or three on Brooke Tattnall. This one is far from over yet. Behind them, the 46 of Brad Hayward. Then the number nine of Dennis Burford, the 75 of Mick Hanlon, the 55 of Ray Scott. The leading trio flash past us once again, 13.14 seconds. Joel Knott would have in the back of his mind somewhere that Brooke Tatnell is starting to catch him and he'll want to go for the victory here. He's sitting in behind Mark Gilbert. Tatnell now begins to reel him in. Mark Gilbert has got away from Joel Knott. Out of four they come. White flag, one remaining. Tatnall to the inside of Joel Knott. But the youngster fends him off. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is going to be a South Australian heat race victory. Mark Gilbert the winner. Second place to Joel Knott in car 44. Third place to the aid of Brooke Tatnall. Fourth position to Brad Haywood. Fifth place to the number nine of Dennis Burford from the 75 of Mick Hanlon. And the number 55 of Ray Scott composed himself and to his credit and was the winner of the first heat race for the speed cars this evening and could be worth watching. A youngster in a real hurry by the name of Luke Dillon in car number two. Coming from rear of field with sponsorship from Sprint Auto Parts. So, uh Villa Hanger, non-starter in this and unable to find his problems from the first heat, so part, cross him out of your books there. Thanks Gas Man. Field getting ready to do just that and stand on the loud pedal as they begin to warm up out of four. Starter sends them on their way. Craig Carr away quickly. Adam Baines follows him into second position. A little bit of pushing and shoving going on mid-pack, but look at the two of Luke Dillon. He's come from nowhere. He gets all sideways into turn number three. Now has dropped back a couple of positions. Something I think is astray on the number two of Luke Dillon all over the shop early on. He now throws it back into one. Now the number nine of John Mills getting stuck into it at the moment with the ten of Hayden Bishop. Some tremendous racing, almost some big trouble in the three-four turn. Snowy White's nearly thrown it away altogether. A couple of drivers perhaps underestimating the track because they're getting all loose and then only just able to hang on to it. At the moment it's the number five, the V4 scat powered machine of Craig Tower out in front. Behind him it is Adam Baines, Baines has hit the lead, Power's in some trouble. In fact uh, the engine appears to have called it a race as he heads towards the infield. There's been a spin in three, caution lights on. Turn number three as we watch the six of uh, Snowy White coming through. Three for you and I think they're ready to go racing. The yellow lights are off so Baines getting ready now to give it a squirt. That's just what he does. Gets away well, drops it down to the bottom side of the track. Look at Dylan again. He flies around the outside of the 25 machine of Grant Coombe. Bishop looked like he had a real go at Baines in one but was not able to make the most of that passing opportunity. Adam Baines chopped him off at the chase. So it's Hayden Bishop in 10, the two of Luke Dillon. In through turns one and two they travel. The number nine of John Mills duking it out. But it's still Adam Baines performing very well in car number 52 for slider machining services and Baines performance engines. 
Noddy Bishop in zero, signalling his intentions now with two and a quarter laps remaining. Around the three four turn they go, Bishop well within striking distance. Can Adam Baines hang on? That's the big question. One driver has spun down the back straight, I think. The officials will deem that he's out of harm's way. Look at this, Bishop going through out of four and he's taken the lead with one lap remaining. So a very smooth manoeuvre in the end. Noddy Bishop, the quickest driver on the track. Luke Dillon continues to go at it with Hayden Bishop driving 10. The chequered flags come out. Good drive, Noddy Bishop. He takes the win from Adam Baines. Hayden Bishop, Luke Dillon. Next is the number nine of John Mills. And he's to be followed in by the number 25 of Grant Coon. In to go for it. The number 10 of Justin Jenkinson looks to have begun best of the rest. One driver takes to the infield, turns it round the wrong way. I hope he's uh, managed to keep it running and can rejoin the field. Biff and Barge their way through turns three and four. There's plenty of it going on. A few of them head for the infield, but now get back onto the racetrack proper. And just look at who's capitalised on all of this. Looks as though it is definitely the 36 of Brian Finlay and the Sigma. Yellow lights have come on. Finlay will be uh, a little disappointed because it may be a complete restart. we just see what the officials deem on that one. He just managed to get past the 119 of Philip Hayes. He certainly did make uh, a terrific start. Away we go, it's the 10 of Justin Jenkinson making a good start this time. Finlay immediately attacks Hayes and goes through into the second spot. In fact, might even take the lead into turn number three. Great driving from Brian Finlay. The rest of them beginning to charge through. Morris Falotz on an outside line. And another driver uh, beginning to move up is Brian Chadwick. He's just been squeezed out of it in turns one and two. Velotz doing a great job, in fact now has moved through into second down the back straight. The big charge is on, Neil Wesley battling hard in car number 49. Wesley way up near the concrete. There's been a spin with the 54 of Kevin Bickle coming to grief in the charger. But uh, Bickle still with the engine running and uh, now rejoins the track, albeit a lap down. And in front for May North Crash and all suburbs bitumen. It's Brian Finlay excelling himself here at the moment. Maris Velotz, he's there in second place. Brian Chadwick now has moved through into third. Behind them, the number 119 of Philip Hayes. Number 71 just uh, taking it steadily. That's Paris Charles. He's been put a lap down. We've still got the 119 of Philip Hayes going at it. In hot pursuit, Peter Taylor driving car number 90. Alan Rutledge is not all that far behind, nor is Neil Wesley in car number 49. Meanwhile, Brian Chadwick is also beginning to make up some time on Maris Velotz as they negotiate turn number three. So exactly two laps remaining in 19.59 seconds. And a pretty quick lap time from Finlay. The number 99 of Peter Ware tucks in behind Philip Hayes as they exit the second corner. Wesley making up some ground and uh, could be a goer for an outside move. White flag is out. Chadwick has gone through on Velotz. Let's see whether Maris can come back at him. They're on their final lap of competition. Three-way dogfight continues between Hayes, Wesley, and uh, that other competitor. I think it's Taylor in 90. But it's checkered flag time. Brian Finlay has driven a top race and takes it out provisionally from Brian Chadwick. Maris for lots for third. Fourth place. Who will it go to? Pretty close, but it's the 99 of Peter Ware that gets there. Over the 49 of Neil Wesley, Alan Rutledge, the 119 of Philip Hayes.
Oil Speeds to Brooke Tadnell joins me in the pits now. Brooke, welcome back to Adelaide. Yeah, it's great to be back here. Uh, this has sort of been a home, for, home away from home for sprint car racing for so many years and uh, it's great that we've got the uh, Masters back on schedule to race at Australian Speedway is really needed. What does the Australian Sprint Car Masters mean to Brooke Tadnell? It's a very prestigious race. Uh, Steve Kinzer has won this race, uh, Gary Rush has won this race, Dad's won it. Uh, I've been here twice before and run two seconds. So. Uh, we're looking forward to tonight. It's a prestigious race. The prize money is very good, and uh, we're, any race we can attempt to win. Uh, we don't get any race half-hearted, and this is a full-on attack again this year. And uh, we're really looking forward to tonight. Now you come back from the states about a month or two ago. How would you rate your past season in the states? Uh, it wasn't too bad. We uh, had three wins, 85% top five finishes. Uh, Knoxville Nationals are a little disappointing. We missed the show by one due to a flat tyre, but that's part and part of most motor racing. Uh, our preparation going into this year, uh, our rate, we're a little bit behind, I think, in uh, terms of what I would have liked to have had done, but uh, what I've got now is, is still the best there is in the country, and uh, I believe I've got the best team, the greatest sponsors out there, and uh, our whole race team works as a family net and uh, Alan Felsch, my engine man and head mechanic, uh, I class him as part of the family. You've had some great success here, you must enjoy running on Speedway City's clay. Yeah, it's, it's great, there's not too many, ra a lot of racetracks these days have been going away from the uh, rough and tacky racetracks that Speedway made its name on and uh, Adelaide you can always come back here and it does get a little rough, well some people like it, some people don't, but it's, it's a racetrack. Uh, it's, you can run three wide here, it's, it's a very fast racetrack and demanding racetrack, there's no time to have a rest out there, so no, I love this place. Your style always very attacking, great to see you back in Adelaide and good luck Brooke. Thanks, happy to be talking to you later uh, with a blue sash around our neck. Thank you. Thanks mate. Watch for Tatnell as well, outside second row, yes here we go, it's Cricky into turn number one, Phil March gives it everything, Brooke Tatnell gets a good run. Peter Smith into fourth, Ando quickly into fifth, but it's Ron Cricky who leads the way, 12.86 seconds on the first lap, he's not mucking about, Peter Smith in some trouble, copped a big bounce coming out of turn two and has been relegated back to sixth position, Bill Marsh looked to have overdid it coming out of four moments ago, Brooke Tatnell makes up some ground, Remember, this is the difference between the second and the first row on the grid. But Ron Cricky, he's demoralising them at the moment. Brooke Tatnell third from David Anderson. A will standing Mark Gilbert, who's just been passed by Peter Smith. 12.72 seconds for Ron Cricky. This West Australian, he is a man on a mission. Tatnell challenges Phil March coming out of turn number four. The white flag is out. Brook Tatnell get onto the front row of the grid. He's given himself a good chance. Phil March edges clear down the back. But race fans, your pole setter for the final is Ron Cricky from WA. Phil March second, Brook Tatnell for third, David Anderson for fourth. Fifth position to Peter Smith from Mark Gilbert in sixth. Well, what a sensational drive. He's proving that it was no fluke from the front of his heat race in resetting the six lap track record, which by the way, we better check rather quickly. One minute 17.07. .07. I think it's absolutely smashed the former record. One minute 17.07 .07 compared to one minute 21.9. So two starts, two records. You ready to go there, Lee? Take it away. Thanks for that one there, John. Down here with the Trophy Dash winner, Ron Crickey from Western Australia. Give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Ron, you've just knocked four seconds off the six lap record. That's your second record for the night. How are you feeling for the feature? Well, I'm sort of surprised. I uh, come all this way. Or we actually come last time and uh, got rained out two weeks ago. But, uh, you know, I'm more surprised. We've we, uh, been working on the car, we've been trying hard. We've been quite fast back home and it's good to come here and have a great racetrack to race on. I think Wendy and uh, all these guys that uh, have worked so hard for so long have just really put on a great surface. We're going to uh, try our best. I mean, it's a long race and uh, you've got the likes of Rush and, and Brooke and all those guys that are here. Even Phil, you know, he's fast, so uh, we'll be doing our best. Yes, we know he's had some good runs back home with, at the home right 
Claremont and Bunbury. Um, you're looking good for a good season. Uh, all the best of the feature and for the rest of the, uh, the rest of season, Ron. Thank you very much. And as I say, it's, it's great to be here and it's good to see a whole lot of fans come out. And uh, let's all have a great race and a really good run. Let's hope the Maxim will keep it together for you, the feature, and see you once again down here, Ron. Congratulations. That was Ron Cricky, ladies and gentlemen. What a great drive it was, and you'll be seeing him, of course, uh, from pole position in the 30 lap A main. The circuit. And these drivers are getting set to wrestle these things over 10 laps. Action underway as Tony Bartlett squares the thing up through turns one and two. Mick Hanlon tucks in behind him. Wayne Bunker's there in third. Dennis Burford in position number four. Greg Matchos begins to put some pressure on from five, as does Gerard Bolt. Greg Matchos in some trouble. In fact, it's not uh, Matchos. I think it might be Bottoms. Darrell Bottoms in 35, pulls to the infield and is out of the running altogether. And in the lead, it's the number 75, Malric Exhaust. A machine being driven, the OTR machine being driven by Tony Bartlett. Matchos has got past Dennis Burford, but Dennis now tries to come back at him in turn number three. But leading them and leading them well is Tony Bartlett. TB out in front by about 10 car lengths on the number 75 of Hanlon out of the Northern Territory. Tony Bartlett a little crossed up out of pit turn. Wayne Bunker beginning to put some pressure on the Northern Territorian. Mick Hanlon in 75. Really feeling the pinch here. Wayne Bunker on the inside. He's just managed to get through. Hanlon all crossed up and sideways in the ex Bill Barrow owned stealth race car. So Wayne Bunker has really done himself and WRB Transport proud with that beautiful move out of four. It looks as though he will transfer to the final if he can stay where he is. Both he and Tony Bartlett will be worthy starters in the A main if they can just keep it together for another three laps of racing. In fact, if anything, Wayne Bunker now beginning to make up some ground on Tony. Nick Hanlon looks as though he will be first reserve. Dennis Burford looks as though he'll be back on the trailer, sadly. So too, Matt Giles, Bolt and Ray Scott in 55. I believe Ray acquitting himself quite well after his uh, early mishap in the night. But around comes our race leader, Tony Bartlett in the number 75 South Australian Malric exhaust machine. Number two of Wayne Bunker chasing him in the Bailey chassis. Giving all that he's got, but these two South Australians will make the transfer. Through they come, well done to both. The time over 10, 2 minutes 18.43. Mick Hamlin finishes third, Dennis Burford fourth. Fifth position, Greg Matchos from Gerard Bolt and Ray Scott. And we'll see what happens. Still a couple of Victorians out there. The South Australian flag to be flown by Adam Baines, Luke Dillon and of course Grant Coombe. They're getting ready to come out of turn number four. And give it a squirt into the opening turn. Twelve on the counter. They get a little sideways washing up near the wall and we're underway. It's the number nine away, better the rest of the pack. That's John Mills from Victoria, but the caution light is on. Caution light is on. You may wonder why, in fact, the green was flashed in the first place, but there's no point going for the quick flash of the red or yellow until the competitors get onto the back straight. Otherwise, there could be all sorts of problems. The driver's uh, backing off the accelerator through the turn. Turns one and two, and they are uh, full tilt and fully sideways. Caution lights off once again, so uh, the number nine will be hoping to uh, get away just as he did a moment ago. Adam Baines and uh, the number two of Luke Dillon there. Now it's take two for the speed car feature. Coombe turns it around and almost up and over is the ten of Hayden Bishop. It looked a lot worse than it was and uh, really in the end Hayden Bishop was quite fortunate. That's a yellow light. He'll be one of them to very quickly uh, have a look at the damage. Speaking of which, our infield reporter right on the scene there will cross down to him. A feature about to go green. That happens now. Luke Dillon 
Goes through on the inside of Adam Baines, but out in front, it's the number nine of John Mills. Baines now works Dillon over out of the second turn. Behind them, it's the zero of Noddy Bishop. And Grant Coombe currently rounds out the field. But leading them at the moment, the number nine of John Mills out of Victoria. Two South Australians battle it out for positions two and three. That's Adam Baines versus Luke Dillon. Really having to feather the throttle at the moment. Things still just a little slippery, but it is betting in very quickly. Through turns one and two. Mills certainly going well. Baines gets a run at Dillon and goes past him, and Luke Dillon's in some trouble. Rest of the field have gone by, and it looks as though he's going to have to park it on the infield. He's just coasted to a stop, unsure as to whether or not there are drivers coming up behind him. So uh, he's done the safe thing and brought it to a halt right up near the concrete wall in turn number three region. So it's a three-way dogfight. That's the story. John Mills, Adam Baines and Noddy Bishop. Baines the meet in the middle of the Victorian sandwich. And wouldn't he dearly like to stick it up Jeffrey Kennett's boys as they work through turns one and two. Let's see if he can run with John Mills in the Vic number nine entry prior to the stoppage. Mill was romp Mills was romping off into the distance. Let's see what Adam can do here for slider machining services and Baines performance engines. He's running about uh, a car width up from the gutter. Still about three or four lengths between himself and the Victorian pilot. Noddy Bishop now beginning to come into his own there in third spot. In the Eastern States, the speed cars certainly have been very competitive. The Hunter Valley Hurricane, Adam Clark, former karting star, has already won two or three feature events at the Newcastle Motordrome. Rod Bowen, another to grace the victory podium. And uh, for the defending Australian champ, Craig Brady, a big dump first time out. But to the action at hand, and it is the number nine of Mills from Victoria looking good. Baines has run a little wide coming out of the 3-4 bend. That will allow Bishop an opportunity to make up some time here. A pair of them separated by no more than they're at about two car lengths as they scream down the back chute and now into three. I think for sure Mills thoroughly enjoying himself with four laps remaining. Adam Baines continuing to work at it here. He's been able to break away a little bit from Noddy Bishop. Noddy, meanwhile, makes up a little bit of ground in the third turn. You can hear the V4 scat purring along in exceptional fashion at the moment for our race leader. I think uh, barring a mechanical problem, just about put your glasses down on this one for John Mills. Of course, Adam Baines and Noddy Bishop will have other ideas about it, but uh, truth of the, of the matter is they're staring at around about 30 to 40 metre deficit with only one lap remaining. Noddy Bishop. Go at Adam Baines. He looks at the inside. He can't do it there. They gas it out of the second corner and fly down the back. Around the northern bend comes our race leader. He'll become the eventual winner. John Mills in Victoria 9. Well done to him. Adam Baines finishes second, and Noddy Bishop, the Victoria Zero, finishes in third place. Only three finishes. Their feature race is underway. Brian Chadwick in 41 gets away superbly. Neil Wesley in car number 49 tucks in behind him. Just watching to see whether they all manage to make it through the first couple of turns okay. No, one driver's had some problems. Car number three, the Commodore is the car that uh, appears to have struck some difficulty and hence the yellow light is on. Final turn, they begin to bring the sedans up to speed. And away we go, Chadwick onto it quickly, Velox with him, he's there in third place. Finlay will look to move through, he's got an inside running, his next target will be Alan Rutledge in 87. And Finlay has certainly been fast man this evening. He's got a little bit of bodywork hanging off the Sigma at the moment. 
to just Commodore Spares and Port Adelaide Radiators. Brian Chadwick leads the way, currently out by around about three or four car lengths. In behind him, the number 49 of Neil Wesley. The 48 of Maris Velox follows them in third place. Oh, there's some trouble here. The number 99 of Peter Ware appears to have cooked it. He's overcooked it coming out of the final turn. He's getting ready to uh, rejoin the racing in period so that he can get right back up on the rest of the field. Chadwick is through. There's Wesley for Australian Auto Salvage. The city dismantles entry of Morris for lots. Alan Rutledge, Brian Finlay. The 119 of Philip Hayes is in there somewhere. The number 90 of Peter Taylor. The 10 of Justin Jenkinson. The 8 of Andy Clayton. And the number 61 of Neville Glasbrook. Now the leader's making his way down the back chute and he's about to come up upon some slower drivers. Some good racing currently going on for positions two and three. It's happening right in front of the main grandstand at the moment. Maris Velox on the inside of Neil Wesley. That's two and three. Brian Finlay is in fourth position. In fifth place is the 87 of Alan Rutledge. Behind him the 119 of Philip Hayes with the 90 of Peter Taylor and then it's back to Monkey Jenkinson. His quartet currently making their way through turns three and four with Glasbrook and Clayton in tow. They are your major players to this point as Brian Chadwick scorches down the back shoot. Can anyone stop him? Perhaps the only one capable of stopping him at the moment would look to be Brian Finlay. Gaggle of cars bunching up in turn three. The 119 of Philip Hayes has just been squeezed out of it. Almost are coming together. In fact, three of them have left the track simultaneously. Monkey Jenkinson, one of them. And the yellow light has come on. Jenkinson in 10, the number 71 of Paris Charles. Kevin Bickle in the charge, but we've already gone green. Chadwick and Wesley away nicely. Finlay. Tries to get through on Maris Velotti. He's given him a bit of a tap and said, hey, I'm here and ready to smoke on by you. And just have a look at our new race leader, Wesley. He's gone straight around the outside of Chadwick. See whether Chadwick can fight back at him here. Neil Wesley getting away to a beautiful start. Down the main shoot they come. Chadwick in second place. Then it's Finlay. And uh, then we look back to Maris Velotz. Race leader out of the second turn, now charging down the back stretch. Sorry about that, folks. Just taking the chance to lubricate the vocal cords. Wesley in through three. Chadwick in behind him. Then we've got Velotz and Finlay down the main stretch. Who will get there? There's five laps now remaining. And this should be a dogged scrap right down to the wire. These four clearly the class of the pack. Chadwick to the inside of Wesley. He's done the job too into turn number three. Velotz now moving forward and the very quick Brian Finlay just lurking back in fourth position. He gets a little bit sideways coming out of four. That'll hurt him a little bit. He's coming up behind Paris Charles. And uh, now Chadwick gets a run through, but he's lost a bit of momentum. Wesley now looked to go to the outside, but couldn't go there. And Velotz has gone straight past him. Down the main stretch they go. Brian Chadwick, Maris Velotz, Neil Wesley, and the 36 of Brian Finlay. Well said, Dave as we watch them charging down the back stretch. So Velotz beginning to hone in. Finlay likewise on the rear side of Wesley's 49 machine. They gas it past the start finishing line now with two remaining. Carnival 90 there in fifth place. Peter Taylor, we haven't forgotten about him. Behind them, Glasbrook. Then we've got the 99 of Ware, the 10 of Jenkinson, the 8 of Clayton. And the number 31 
coming past as well. Then it's back to Chadwick in car number 41. Has driven uh, a great race thus far. Now has some real breathing space. 20 odd car lengths between himself and Maris Velots. And so first up feature winner for the street stocks will be none other than Brian Chadwick or Willard. He nearly threw it away in the last corner, but he hangs on. Brian Chadwick. So given his crew uh, just a bit of an anxious moment there. Maris Velots, I think in the end, did get there for second over Brian Finlay. Neil Wesley. Very nearly dropped back into the clutches of Peter Taylor, who was fifth. Sixth place, Peter Ware. Seventh, Neville Glasbrook. Eighth position, Justin Jenkinson. Ninth position uh, to the 31, closely followed by the number eight of Andy Clayton. So the winner about to accept the chequered flag from Scott McIntosh and then embark on his victory lap. So give him a cheer as he cruises around folks at top f one notable event when brett lacy captured his second australian sprint car masters up not a hundred percent on whether or not they're going to go for the big knoxville four wide salute or not currently only two abreast as is normally the case looks as though they're going to get uh, the word next time through and that of course if they do it's a big salute to you and your opportunity to yell and cheer and of course all get to your feet and give as much support to your favorite driver or drivers as you possibly can the fireworks are on they're about to go four wide for the australian sprint car masters come on folks up to your feet and give them as much as you can as they cruise in through turns one and two Always a tremendous sight. The sprint cars. Four wide at the moment. A photographer's dream down the back stretch. That's the way. Give them a big cheer as they come down. Rolling very sedately. Very soon, of course. They'll have the foot in the bucket and be serious about 30 laps of combat. Out of turn number four. They'll break formation shortly. It's your last chance on the main stretch. Come on, let's do some Old man's job to do that. Rush, Green, Hayward, Reuter, Downing, Knott, Calandro, Squires, Bartlett, and Wayne Barco! The front end loss! Here we go! A frenetic start! I'm not sure whether they're going to get the green or not. I can't see the green lights on. No, it's caution. Well, that is a wild start, ladies and gentlemen. These small blocks certainly pack a real punch. These drivers were cruising around very slowly. Then they got on the hammer. There was cars going sideways. They were going in all directions, coming out of four. A very untidy start. And hence, no green was given. We'll try and do it again. Phil March versus... from the great man Gary Rush behind Gary we've got David Anderson followed by Mark Gilbert Trevor Green the 46 of Hayward the 95 of Mark Reuter the 44 of Joel Knott the 33 of Jazz Calandro the 97 of Darrell Downing in behind them we've got the 17 of Brett Squires from the two of Wayne Bunker then Tony Bartlett 
could this go from flag to flag? That's the big question early on that I pose to you. Puff traffic could well become a big factor. Cricky now edges up behind Tony Bartlett in 75. Phil Marsh knows that it's a long race. Cricky shows Bartlett his front end in an attempt to uh, worry him out of position. Left flag is out for Bartlett. Phil Marsh and Brooke Tatnell now makes the run. Tatnell going at March in three. So it's March in second, Brooke Tatnell in third. Peter Smith doing an incredible job in fourth. Gary Rush has been. Six places, David Anderson. Whoa, look out! The red has come on. Cannot take a trick, the aid of Peter Smith appears to have uh, perhaps made contact with the 75 of Tony Bartlett. And the sad story is uh, Peter Smith up and over in turn number two. Solid red light situation. So once that gate swings open, the crews will be allowed out onto the circuit to make uh, some minor adjustments to these cars if they decide to. Peter Smith climbing out of the car. Looks th as though he is okay. Give him a hand, please. <laughs> He's out of the car and he certainly has geared up for this season. It would be a very disappointed man. Was running ahead of Gary Rush in the order. The, uh, the Maxim now being rolled back right side up. And Peter now will, of course, assess the damage very quickly. Have come back on, so uh, we may not have time. We can see uh, Peter trudging back off towards the infield. And of course, a sick and sorry sight for uh, any owner, any driver of one of these vehicles when uh, they do appear somewhat of a crumpled mess. Let's see whether the caution lights go out. Yes, they do. Ron Cricky can get on the hammer anywhere from around about now. Phil March and Brooke Tatnell right there with him. And the right pair of Brook Tatnell almost in the cockpit with him. It was that close. Oh, Marsh and run in. They've really got that Maxim hooked up now. But look at that Tatnell is sensational stuff. Tatnell in the second place. Brooke Tatnall desperately wants to win this race. He knows Ron Cricky is very smooth and very fast. And this Cricky is Gary Rush is in two. onto the header pipes. Meanwhile, Ron Cricky continues to lead by about 10, maybe 15 car lengths on Brook Tatnell. Then it's Philip March in car number three. The 37 of David Anderson, the five of Mark Gilbert, the four of Trevor Green, the 46 of Brad Haywood, the 95 of Mark Reuter, the 33 of Jazz Galandro from Darrell Downing, Joel Knott, Brett Squires. certainty in speedway racing that's for sure. Tatnell now comes up on Wayne Bunker. Soars past him like there's no tomorrow. Wayne a very experienced driver and to his credit holds his racing line and is allowing the leaders to go through. Ten laps remaining for the San Susi speedster. 
now looks to get underneath the 17 of Brett Squires. I notice the five of Mark Gilbert, Felly hooked up as well, Trevor Green chasing him. But at the moment it's the eight of Brooke Tatnall, the 95 of Ron Cricky, the three of Phil March, the 37 of David Anderson, the five of Mark Gilbert, the four of Trevor Green. In behind them it's Brad Haywood. From Mark Reuter, Chaz Calandro, Daryl Downing, and Joel Knott. Six and a half laps remaining. For the Shell Helix driver, he really hasn't put a foot wrong. He was beginning to catch Cricky. Ron then had that moment in his maxim. Got all hooked up. A lesser driver may have ended up on his head, but Ron salvaged it. I'm sure he won't be too disappointed in second place. Traffic ahead now, thick traffic indeed. Brooke Tatnall gets underneath Wayne Bucker, he's coming up now behind Joel Knott. Lap flag is out. Cricky and March determined to keep going here. Anything can happen up ahead of them. Ron Cricky in turn number three is coming up to Wayne Bucker. Phil March carries the front end. He's after him now. Phil March in turns one and two. That's the battle for positions two and three respectively. Still in fourth, it's Mark Gilbert. Tim Green in fifth, Ron Cricky finally manages to get under the two of Wayne Bunker. Phil March follows suit. The white flag is out. Brooke Tatnall puts us on his gun to win. The Australian Sprint Cup. to David Anderson, fifth to Mark Gilbert, sixth Trevor Green, seventh Brad Haywood, eighth position Mark Reuter, ninth position perhaps Chaz Calandro, tenth Daryl Downing and eleventh Joel Knott. At four minutes 48 so if the, if the race was to be held over, over 20 laps, Brooke Tatton would absolutely blitz that track record held by Trevor Green but as it was a 30 lap race um, Trevor Green will still hold the, the 20 lap record, so that's an interesting fact for you. And finishing in fourth position tonight in the Australian Sprint Car Masters, driving car number 37, let's hear it for David Anderson. Plenty of support here in Adelaide, rightfully so, has been very successful here in the past. Nice sash, Councillor Gay Smallwood Smith to make the presentation. In fact, I think one of David's biggest supporters here in Adelaide. Well done, Ando. Yeah, thanks very much, John. Um, I got to thank the curators of the track. Although I only have one small criticism: they shouldn't have graded it before the feature. The track was the best I've ever seen a racetrack in this country um, to start a feature without even touching it. So uh, other than that, they've done a fantastic job. I'd like to, I'd like to thank my long-time sponsor, um, Wagga Mobile Cranes, Don Harper. He flew all the way over from Sydney, actually, from business to be here tonight. And um, if it wasn't for him, I, you know, I wouldn't be out here on the racetrack. And uh, last but not least, my crew who worked their butt off all the time. But thank you all for coming. Well done, David. Thank you very much. If you could just uh, take your spot here somewhere for some group photos in a moment. We'll move along to our third place getter. Pretty wild ride for him. Let's hear some noise for Adelaide's Phil March. What well up, Marchie? Pretty tough drive, that one. There's the sash, and uh, we've got, I think, another lovely gift to come your way as well. We just make sure we saw all that out. There's the, uh, the box for that. Congratulations, Phil. Thank you. Um, congratulations to Brooke and Ron. Um, they did well. Um, we went far away. I've got to thank everybody who's helped me. Ashley, Andrew, Peter, Greg. You know, it's I wouldn't be here without them. And I'd like to say hello to George and Isabel up in the box tonight. Well done, Phil. Thanks very much. If uh, you would like to take your place next to David there for a group photo in a moment. And we'll now talk to the runner-up. He led for about half of the event. 
Please make some noise for Bunbury's Ron Cricky. Congratulations, Ron. The sash and uh, the gift as well from uh, Speedway City to come your way. Honestly thought you were going to get there for a while, Ron. Held a perfect line, just that one little mishap in turns one. Brooke managed to get through. Yeah, well, um, you know, that's made it all for a really great race to have um, like a small thing be the, the split between the two cars at the front. You know, I, I, I put it down to just a little blue from my part and uh, Brooke capitalised. Hopefully we can get it back in a different place some other day. But uh, I'd like to thank all you guys for coming out and, uh, and supporting us all here at the racetrack. It's really good. I'd like to congratulate uh, Brooke on winning and his team. They've obviously done, uh, done their homework and they come and beat us tonight, but uh, we'll be back. And uh, I'd like to uh, congratulate um, Phil March and Ando for third and, and fourth. And, uh, and the guys that actually come with me from Bunbury to uh, take their time out. My young nephew come over, young Bob, Keith, my brother John and uh, Larry. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Good on you, Ron. And the best of luck for the rest of the season as well. Good stuff. And now, of course, the winner of the Australian Sprint Car Masters. Let's hear it for Brooke Tatno. We've got the sash here. And uh, Brooke just moving across. Congratulations, top stuff. On behalf of Castrol Australia, I'd like to congratulate you, Brooke, for a great drive. Uh, congratulations to all the drivers. It was a great race and a great event. So, well done, Brooke. Yeah, I'd like to thank Castrol. Um, uh, they might be a rival oil company, but uh, any company that and, and supporter that supports sprint car racing, it's definitely the greatest form of motorsport. I'm happy to, uh, to be associated with them, but uh, it's the Shell Helix team, Fanacomics Fam team, they've done a hell of a job. Uh, I've been testing them out a little bit lately. We've been starting, doing it tough and starting at the back tonight. We've got to start up front and uh, I just showed the testament of uh, Helen Felsch's brilliance and the brilliance of a engine builder that he is. But uh, no, it's been great. I've come to this Masters two years before and run second twice uh, to come here. Everyone says it's just another race meeting in South Australia, but um, the fans turned out in uh, thousands tonight, which is great to see. And uh, there's plenty of other motorsport and uh, sporting events on tonight. And it's good to see we've got a good crowd and uh, go home tell your friends and we'll be back here for the uh, World Series Sprint Cars and put on another great show. Brooke, what was going through your mind when you saw Ron have that bit of a bicycle in through turns one and two? Well, there's a blue sash at the end of this thing and that's all I needed to see. But, uh, oh no, Ron got caught up behind lap traffic and uh, sometimes it plays for you, sometimes it plays against and tonight it just played into our hands and uh, uh, you take them as you get them, uh, whether it's good luck, bad luck or indecision and tonight the good luck uh, came our way, bad luck for Ronnie, he did a hell of a job and uh, a lot of people said he's over the hill but he's just proved tonight he can, and everyone says he's only from the west coast and he can only run with the west coast guys, well he's come here tonight and proved uh, pretty well to everyone, he was uh, one of the top men to beat. Absolutely, congratulations once again Brooke, a top drive from you and well done to your entire team. Yeah, thank you. I just, uh, as I say, let's, let's support sprint car racing, the promoters of here have done a real, uh, done it tough trying to get this place back on track and uh, there, there's a credit to uh, the promotion and I just hope they hang in there and uh, keep putting sprint car racing where it should be. Here, here. Brooke Tatnall, ladies and gentlemen. Brooke, just before we go into the group photograph, we've got uh, for the local SA Sprint Car Action Group. There's 500 bucks at the end of this, so if you could please draw one out for us. A dollar a ticket it was. 500 bucks, hard cash for the winning, to be picked up from Peter Tuss in just a few moments. <coughs> Hope you got your tickets. Ticket, 1334. Ticket, 1334 to the winner. You can pick up your cash at Peter Tucker's bus down in the pit area. Thank you very much, and congratulations once again to our place getters. I'll get out of the way, get my ugly scone out of it, and we'll allow the photographers to strut their stuff. Well done, guys.